injuries from John Wick 3 fight scenes. Who got injured and how did it happen? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedic injuries and broken bones that's easy to understand for the everyday person. Before we get started, if you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Stable Knees. Link will be down in the description. So today we're going to talk about injuries from the latest edition of the John Wick series of movies. As you may or may not know, there are three movies in the series, the latest of which is of course John Wick number three. And just to provide a little bit of background for those of you who may not know who John Wick is, John Wick is a fictional character that is played by actor Keanu Reeves. And John Wick is supposed to be the world's greatest assassin. And without giving away the entire plot line of the trilogy, at the beginning of John Wick number three, John is running because he is in trouble. And when I say trouble, I mean he has been excommunicated, well, not quite excommunicated, but almost excommunicated by the rest of the Assassin's Guild. And it kind of sucks to be excommunicated from anything because, you know, everybody has FOMO, fear of missing out. They all want to be part of something. But in this particular case, it's more than that because once he is excommunicated, then he becomes fair game for all of the rest of the Assassins. And although John Wick is the world's best Assassin, when you have all the rest of the Assassins in the world coming for you, that might be a bit of a problem. With that being said, let's get to watching the clips. So this first clip that we're gonna review is one of the ones that opens up the movie, uh, and this is basically the library fight scene. So in this scene, John is in the library and he's looking to find something that he has stashed away in a secret hiding place. Unfortunately, there is another assassin who has come to the library looking for John, hoping to cash in on the bounty. And although we are still within that one hour window, the other assassin figures that, hey, it's close enough. Nobody's gonna know the difference because once he kills John Wick, there'll be nobody left to tell that he actually did the act before John was officially excommunicated. So John Wick and the other assassins start to fight and the assassin pulls out a knife with which he stabs John Wick in his right shoulder. When he stabs John, he does so in a downward direction in the area of the acromioclavicular joint or the AC joint. And it's difficult to tell exactly where the blade ends up because of course John is wearing a suit, but the blade hits in the area of the AC joint either directly in front of or directly behind the clavicle. And we can see that the blade penetrates by uh, a distance of approximately one to one and a half or maybe even up to two inches. So if you were the assassin, and you were fortunate enough to miss one of the bony structures present, which includes the acromion, the clavicle, or the humeral head, then it's possible that the blade could penetrate into the soft tissue in that area and damage any one of the structures in and around the AC joint. And this would include the pleura, or the tissue that surrounds the lung, the lung itself at its apex, or the, the apex of the lung, or any one of the blood vessels that run underneath the clavicle in this area. Given that John was able to continue fighting after he was stabbed by the blade here, um, we can assume that he did not have an injury to any one of the vascular structures that laid underneath the clavicle, but it is possible that he could have injured the lung, in which case he would have what is called a pneumothorax. And this just describes air that is escaping the lung, but is trapped inside of the lung cavity, so the chest cavity. Air that is contained within the chest cavity or the thorax, but is outside of the lung tissue itself is called a pneumothorax. If that air actually collapses the lung and prohibits the lung from expanding, this is what is known as a tension pneumothorax. And either one of these injuries is a possibility after you've been stabbed in the chest cavity by a sharp object. Fortunately for John Wick, it doesn't appear that this was the case. It appears that his Kevlar reinforced suit was able to prevent most of this damage and he was able to not only um, defeat the assassin, but able to live to fight another time. 
So the second scene here that we're gonna talk about, this is uh, uh, a scene which has a lot of great stuff in it. Uh, and this is shortly after the library scene. Uh, and this is where John Wick now goes to see the doctor. Now obviously since John Wick is an assassin, he can't just walk into the hospital or to the regular doctor's office to receive aid. And so he goes to um, a underground physician to get patched up before he is fully excommunicated from the assassin guild. So John goes in to see the doctor and the doctor starts to perform a quick examination and he's trying to do so as quickly as possible because there really isn't that much time before the, the clock strikes the uh, given hour where John is being excommunicated. And as he does his uh, preliminary examination, he kind of is cleaning up the wound and he comments to John that the knife penetrated and nicked the artery. And, and the doctor doesn't say in specific which artery was nicked, but he does say that he'll have to sew John up. Now in the area of the clavicle and the acromioclavicular joint, there are a number of arteries, but basically they are all branches of the major artery in this area, which is the subclavian artery. Subclavian meaning underneath the clavicle. So the subclavian artery is the main artery that feeds this area. The subclavian artery is a major branch of the brachiocephalic, which comes off the right-hand side of the heart and supplies the upper extremity on the right-hand side. Now, generally speaking, when you have an arterial injury, you want to perform a primary repair if possible, or you want to provide some kind of tamponade to that artery to prevent leakage from the area of laceration if the artery itself cannot be repaired. So generally speaking, if John had suffered an arterial injury in this area, unless it were a minor branch of the subclavian artery, then it would be necessary for him to undergo a vascular repair in order to prevent the formation of a significant hematoma or collection of blood underneath the clavicle and quite possibly a hemothorax, which is blood within the thoracic cavity and around the lung, as a result of the bleeding. Now, if you look closely at the instrument that the doctor and John are using here to sew up the wound, you'll note that they are using a long nosed instrument. And this is actually a coker, which is a grasping instrument. And they are not using a needle driver, which they should be using to sew up the wound. And perhaps the doctor just, you know, he didn't have a needle driver in his instrument set, but here they're using the wrong instrument. And that's just a technical thing. In addition, we can see here that once John takes over the job of suturing, he is using what is known as a continuous suture to close the wound. Whereas normally this is something that would be closed using interrupted sutures. But in all fairness to John, even though he's the world's greatest assassin, he may not be the world's greatest surgeon. And I think that it would actually be kind of difficult to tie knots on yourself in the area of your shoulder with one hand. That would probably be pretty difficult. I'm not sure that I could do that. Although we can tie knots with one hand, but I'm just not sure that I could do it right here in the shoulder on myself. Now to close this scene, we have the doctor who does not want to suffer any repercussions from the assassin's guilt. He gives John a small caliber handgun and instructs John to shoot him to make it look like John overpowered the doctor and forced him to help John um, against his will. The doctor instructs John to shoot him twice, once on the left hand side below the floating rib and then again on the left hand side just above his left clavicle. It, now it's difficult to say exactly what caliber of weapon this is that he is shooting the doctor with. We don't get a clear picture of the weapon at any point in time. Um, so it's difficult to say exactly what it is, but I'm venturing to guess it's either a nine mil or it's a uh, 22 uh, caliber handgun. And with either of those caliber of weapons, you could survive um, gunshots in both of the areas where the doctor was shot. Um, although uh, there would potentially be significant consequences from those gunshot wounds. In particular, the, the gunshot wound in the abdomen 
there are a number of structures on the left hand side of the body in that area that could potentially be at para. And those include the small bowel, the left kidney, the pancreas, and the transverse colon. And this is an injury that could potentially lead to a colostomy for the doctor. And a colostomy is basically where they take your large bowel and externalize it through a hole in your abdomen. So a colostomy is, is basically a procedure that is performed after you have suffered an injury to your abdomen where the interior of the abdomen has become contaminated with fecal matter or some other kind of contaminant. They take one end of your colon and staple that shut and then they take the other end, the upper end, which is connected to your small bladder, your stomach and everything else and they externalize that through a hole in the front of your belly. So basically your colon, instead of going all the way through and being connected to your rectum, it is, comes out through a hole in the front of your belly. So the hole that the colon is externalized through is called a stoma and typically you would have a bag that goes over top of that that would be used to collect the contents that are coming through or working their way out of your bowel. That's right, you'd be pooping in a bag. So I'm not sure that I'd want to get shot there. The shot just above the clavicle, that one's much better. If the doctor was fortunate, John would hit nothing but muscle. If the doctor was a little less lucky, he would suffer an injury to the brachial plexus, which is a collection of nerves that comes from your neck, which runs down underneath your armpit and goes into your arm. And basically, it's the collection of nerves that controls everything in your upper extremity. So, if he was unfortunate, then he might suffer an injury to that, and then his arm just might not work anymore. And that would be bad, especially if he's a doctor, because then he would only have one hand. So for the next scene that we're talking about here, this is the fight scene in the weapons display room. And here, John Wick is fighting several assassins simultaneously. Because, you know, if you're going to fight the best assassin in the world, you just can't do it like man to man. You, you need an army on your side because he's just about that dangerous. So throughout this scene, John incapacitates most of the assassins, leaving only two with which he is fighting at the point of the injury. While fighting both of these assassins, at separate points I might add, he gets each of these assassins in an armbar. And in both cases, he forces the elbow beyond the point where it is supposed to go, and we hear a sound that leads us to believe that they both suffered injuries to their elbows. And in this particular case, the injury that they each would have received would be an elbow dislocation. And this just means that the bones of the elbow have become separate from one another as a result of the force that John Wick applied through the elbow joint. Now normally, after having suffered an elbow dislocation, you would not be able to use that extremity until somebody had performed a closed reduction. Or in other words, until they had put the elbow back into joint where it was supposed to be. But we see that the assassins here are able to continue fighting with John after for an extended period of time, as if nothing had happened to the arms and more specifically the elbow that he had dislocated. But this is a fictional movie and we have to suspend our disbelief. But later in this scene, we see that John wants to ensure that the assassins are done and can no longer fight back in any way, shape or form. And with one of the assassins, we see that John actually stabs this assassin in the head, the top of his head with a knife. That's pretty brutal. The area in which he stabs the assassin is known as the bregma. And basically, this is the point where both the coronal and the sagittal sutures of the skull converge together. And while the skull is quite thick and strong here, I'm sure it's possible, especially if you hit the blade several times, such as John Wick did, that you could penetrate the skull with a stout blade in this area. As a result, the assassin would suffer intracerebral injury and hemorrhage, or in other words, bleeding, and basically, the assassin is not going to have a good outcome. Okay, so for this next scene, um, uh, we're going to go to the horse riding scene. And this scene opens up with John being struck not once, but twice, 
by two different cars while he is running through the street. He is struck first on the right hand side and thrown several feet before being struck on the left hand side by another car traveling in another direction. In both cases, it appears that at the last second, John is able to see the car approaching and he is able to raise his leg slightly, first the right and then the left leg before being struck. But in both cases, he is struck on the lower extremity below the level of the knee and he rolls up onto the hood of the car before being thrown to the ground. Now in this case, John is able to get up after these impacts and run into some kind of barn structure. But in both of these cases, I would normally anticipate lower extremity fractures involving either the tibia, the fibula, or both. And in fact, it is not uncommon for these type of injuries to be open as a result of the energy imparted during the accident. So in this next scene, we see that John is looking for a friend, Sophia, in Casablanca. And when John arrives at her residence, he is greeted in an unfriendly manner by her two attack dogs and by Sophia herself. And Sophia wastes no time before she shoots John in the chest with a small caliber handgun. Now, of course, John is wearing his Kevlar reinforced suit, so of course the bullet does not penetrate, but he is thrown across the room by the impact. So here, John is shot in the chest from a range of approximately 20 to 30 feet by a small caliber weapon. Now, I can't tell you the exact caliber of weapon that is being used, but from the looks of it, it is either a 9mm, 40 cal or a 45 ACP round that is being shot. If we assume that it is a nine millimeter round, then the typical speed of this round is gonna be anywhere from 300 to 400 or maybe 410 meters per second. And this is enough to carry anywhere from 430 to 640 joules of energy. That's a lot. And it's probably gonna hurt when it hits. Not only is this enough force to knock you off your feet when you are struck, it is also enough force to cause additional injury. Now, assuming that you are protected by Kevlar and there is no actual penetration, the additional injuries may include bruising, pulmonary contusions, and broken ribs. So the final scene that I'm gonna comment here is one of the scenes at the end of the movie when John is on the rooftop with Winston and the adjudicator from the Assassin's Guild. Now in this scene, John is shot several times by his friend Winston. And as he stumbles backwards, he actually falls off the roof of the building. Now it is difficult to say exactly how high this building is supposed to be, but if we roll through the film in slow motion, it appears that he's falling from approximately five to six stories. So let's just say six stories. Now on his way down from the roof, John bounces off an awning and then subsequently off the metal railing of a balcony on the other side of the alley before he falls to the ground. Is it possible for someone to even survive this fall? Studies have shown that the LD50 or the 50% lethal dose for falls from a height is approximately 48 feet. So this basically means that if you fall from a height of 48 feet onto the ground below, you have a 50% chance of surviving. So if we assume that John fell from a height of around 50 to 60 feet, then there's around a 40 to 50% chance that he would survive from this height. However, John would not survive this fall totally unscathed. We would anticipate that John would have a number of injuries, including a closed or open head injury, injuries to the spine, injuries to the thorax, injuries to his pelvis, injuries to the extremities, and of course, injuries to the internal organs. Basically, if John survived this, we would expect him to be messed up with a capital messed. Wow. But of course, John Wick is the world's best assassin. And as such, we could expect that he would be tough, rugged, and resilient. But we wouldn't expect him to be conscious after this, and we certainly wouldn't expect him to be able to speak after this, even if he was really, really pissed off. You pissed John. <laughs> yeah. That being said, it appears that John Wick is able to withstand an inordinate 
amount of damage and keep on ticking. So there you have it. Today I've been talking about injuries from John Wick 3 fight scenes. I hope this video has been both entertaining and educational for you. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And keep your eyes peeled for membership options coming to this channel soon. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.